chapter 15 and 16, and John 15, 26, and 27, and 16, 14 through 15. Uh, we start with uh, John 15. When the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me, yet none of you asked me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you, but if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment, about sin because they do not believe in me, about righteousness because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer, about judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, the Pentecostal story is one of the most dramatic and perplexing stories of all of the early Christian history. One of my uh, colleagues called it uh, like uh, a sledgehammer coming into the Christians, and, and not even a subtle sledgehammer. This was the Holy Spirit being outpoured with force upon the disciples who sat in that room that day. And we today, we, we look at the, the story of Pentecost and we wonder what was happening and why it was happening and whether it, it has any meaning or if it's relevant to our lives today as Christians in this world. The Pentecost story is a fulfillment of the prophecies of the, the book of Joel. And it, in it, it declares that in the last days that Holy Spirit will be poured out from heaven onto all people equally. And the systems and the structures that have divided human beings for so long, they will be dissolved. God would be revealed and he would reside, in, rather than in temples, he would reside in us as human beings. Rather than, than being in a physical place, God would, would reside within us as his temples, in, our, in us as human beings, ourselves. So using this imagery of the temple of God moving from a physical location in Jerusalem to within the hearts of every human being, we see in Acts 2 this wonderful metaphor of this new thing that God is doing with us as human beings. When we look at this picture, we see the little flames hanging over the heads of the disciples. Uh, in the Hebrew Bible, when the tabernacle and the temple were first uh, established, the people knew God was there in that place. They knew his presence by the flame that was there within the temple uh, that was there. It was called the Shekinah of God, the presence of God, the glory, the presence of God, his manifestation of physical. In, in the wilderness, as he led the Israelites out of Egypt, he, he led them with the fire in front of them, the flames that led them away. In the temple, he was the flame that was there within that temple. From the very earliest of days uh, of the temple, the prophets continued to say that the rituals of the temple, that they would one day be nothing but shadows, as the coming reality would be a different experience for those Christians as God came. This is ultimately what Joel was prophesying, that there would be a new day, a new creation, God's love is not limited to just to the people of Israel. But God's presence it is not limited to just that one physical location of the temple either. Uh, the prophecies of Pentecost were prophecies of a day when the temple and all its exclusive rites and rituals, all its burdens and laws would be done with. There would be no more of that. And the revelation of God's presence in all and through all would be experienced by all who believed in Christ. In Acts 2, the Shekinah of God appears above the heads of the disciples 
of every nation, every tribe, every language, and often in artistic and iconic depictions of the coming of the Holy Spirit, just like the one we saw just a minute ago, the tongues of fire are there, this descending upon the disciples there in that room. There are here as small flames above their heads and a flickering flame that flies, you know, rushing into the house on that wind that blows through. Interestingly, you know, the word for the tongues of fire and the, the word for tongues itself, they are the same exact word. And, and so the word is glossa. Glossa, it, it speaks of that bodily part or that language uh, making thing that we use our tongue. Tongue. And so when the Spirit came, the Holy Spirit came, the disciples were literally given tongues of fire. Their tongues were emblazoned. They were on fire for God. And they found themselves confessing the wonderful works of God to all those around them, everyone who was present. A new community was birthed, and they were not bound by the, the, the law, but liberated by Jesus' grace, by God's grace. A new day had begun, and a revelation that God was now dwelling, uh, dwelling in among people inside of us, in our hearts and in our beings, and absolutely no one was excluded. Together, we united and made all of the diversity of the nations, of languages, of peoples, we become the new temple through which the glory of God is made manifest to the earth as it is in heaven. So despite the dramatic appearance of the tongues of fire, some of the people in the, the attendance there that day, they didn't believe what was happening. They couldn't believe what they were seeing. They even used a tried and true insult to show that they didn't believe. They're drunk. They're all drunk. That's just how it is. They're all drunkards. They've been into the new wine this morning, and so we just need to ignore them. They'll get over it. But Peter steps up to say, no, you don't understand. They're not drunk in the way that you think they are. They're not, they're not, they haven't been drinking of the new wine, but they've been, been drunk on the Holy Spirit. They're drunk on God. They've been drinking the new wine of God, of the Holy Spirit within them. It's been poured out on their souls and into their mouths, and they're spewing it everywhere for all of you to hear. Our tongues, they want to spew out anything that will help us to get ahead, anything that will help bend the world, word, world to our will. But these new tongues that are filled with the Holy Spirit, they're given to us so that we can speak everything that is the truth of Christ. There's an animated series on Cartoon Network called Futurama. And on Futurama, the, the actions be, always begin with this elderly professor named uh, Farnsworth who's always coming up to the, his employees and saying, good news, everyone, good news. Only every time Professor Farnsworth comes up and says good news, everybody just wants to run because they know the good news is not necessarily going to be good news for them. It might take them into some difficult or dangerous places. But in one episode of Flight to Remember, his proclamation comes, Good news, everyone! And everybody quits. We're done. We're out of here. And then his response to that is, In that case, I have to hire a whole new crew to go on our, our company vacation. We want to hear those things that benefit us. But sometimes the word that comes isn't always the word we want to hear. And it wasn't the word that all of the people there in that place wanted to hear either. The power of the Spirit, it enlivened the tongues of the disciples. You will receive the power of the Holy Spirit as it has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses. That's what God calls us to, to be witnesses to the story of Jesus, the good news of the gospel with everyone around us. That's what witnesses do. They tell everybody about what they've seen, what they've experienced, what they know about the subject. And these 120 Christians, they were now uh, being seen and heard and telling everyone it, as they were empowered and enkindled and enlivened with their tongues to speak of the hope through the Holy Spirit about the good news of Jesus Christ. Come, Holy Spirit, was what they wanted. 
He wanted the Spirit to come upon them so that they could share rather than to hide within that room. And we too, but we too pray that the Holy Spirit will come upon us, that he, the Holy Spirit will fill our hearts with faith, with, with faith and kindle in us that fire, that fire of God's love that will send us out into the world to speak about the story of, of our Savior. What the Spirit is doing through this miracle, it, it becomes clear when we hear, we hear them telling of our own, uh, of the story of, in our own tongues of the mighty works of God. So what God was doing there in Jerusalem that day was to start the worldwide mission that we all are still working to accomplish to spread the good news of Jesus Christ and the good news of the gospel everywhere in the world to every nation, every language, every creed, every person. The gospel came to the Phyregians, to the Cappadocians, to the Elamites, to all of those names that we don't hear a lot of today. It came to all of them in their language, in Cappadocian, in Phyregian. Uh, 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 and the mighty works of God throughout history have done that. The mighty works of God came to the Germans, to the Swedes, to the English, to all of them, in German, in Swedish, and in English. It's been through like that throughout history. The word of God, the good news of the gospel has come to all of us in a language we can understand. Now, that's why we're here today. Somewhere down the line, our ancestors heard the good news of the gospel, and that got passed down from one generation to the next. And it continues to be that way. Us passing the word of good news of Jesus Christ throughout the world. We're here, and as Christians, we, as a result of us being followers of Christ, we are sent out to be those witnesses that share with those around us that word of Christ. Now, we may not be by region or Cappadocian, and I don't know too many by regions or Cappadocians, to say the least, but I do know how to speak English, and some of you may know some other languages. There are people around you who need to hear it in our languages. And not only do we have the language, but we also have gifts of the Holy Spirit, which can help us to share uh, that message with those around us. The Holy Spirit gives us those gifts so that we can share the good news of the gospel with others. Think of the mighty works of the Son of God. Think of uh, the only begotten Son who came into this world was incarnate, and born through the Virgin Mary. Think about the mighty works that Christ performed in his public ministry throughout all of those stories that you've heard since you were small, hopefully. Uh, healing the sick, uh, restoring the light of sight to the blind, calming storms, raising up the dead. All of the stories that we hear of Jesus, all those marvelous works that he did to restore creation that has been falling apart that has fallen. Think of the mighty works of God who sent his only son willing to come here and to, be, to die on a cross for our sins. Think of the son of God who came to crush death and to fight with Satan so that we too might have victory over death. Think of God who raised his son from the dead and gave him triumph over the grave. We know the mighty works of God. We know the stories, we know what happened, and we know how God has influenced and affected our lives, and we are called to share that with others. And most of all, how God has given us the faith in this Savior who has come to free us from our sins. The Spirit has opened our ears to hear the stories, and He's opened our mouths as well to share those stories with others around us. We have been given tongues of fire for God so that we can tell of the mighty works of God throughout our part of the world. The disciples of Pentecost, they told others the great things that they knew about God. The Spirit certainly used them to speak and to prepare the hearers for what Peter would then come along and tell them. That's when preacher Peter steps up to the, to the podium and he begins to speak and he tells them, he gives them the whole nine yards. He goes even further into Jesus and his resurrection and this whole idea of faith and, and a fulfillment of scripture and forgiveness of sin. So here he goes and he tells all of them 
And so it's so it is today that both us as both you as lay people and us as preachers, all of us are called to be out there sharing the good news of Jesus Christ, of the good news of the gospel with everyone. Our tongues need to be under the control of God. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to work within us. That tongue will speak the truth of God's mighty works out there in the world because it can speak nothing but God's truth. The mighty work, works of God are still going on today. God is at work in our world. God is out there doing marvelous things. But we need to be looking for where God is at work. We need to be watching for where God is. And we need to be moving to those places in the world, in our community, and in our own lives. Because sometimes God boldly comes in like that, not so uh, humble, a uh, sledgehammer, and smashes right into the middle of our lives as well. We need to be uh, calling on the Holy Spirit to fill us and to allow us to be emboldened and emblazoned to go out into the world and to share the message of the gospel. Today, we need to continue to respond just as those disciples responded with an ever-present call for the Holy Spirit to fill us and for us to go out and share with everyone around us. May we go to be good disciples, filled with the Holy Spirit at all times. Amen. All right. Your questions. How can you be more open to hearing, seeing, and feeling the Holy Spirit in your life? What can you do each day to invite the Holy Spirit to move uh, to use you? And what are some of the ways you can use your unique abilities and talents to share the good news of Jesus with others? We all are gifted in some way, shape, or form. God gave us those gifts so we can 